Cheers. This is a level C class. We're going to do a full bar and then some exercises on points, some at the bar and some trying without the bar. So let's go ahead and start. I don't really like to do long things right at the very beginning of class when they're cold. So let's do a pre-bar little warm-up exercise to get our muscles moving a little bit. So I'm gonna face the bar on seven and eight and I'm gonna mirror you. So this is my left leg, but use this as your right leg. I'll do half point, full point, half point, and lower. And then same thing with your other leg, six, seven, eight. Plie, roll up, find lift your heels as high as you can, stretch and lower. Do that twice, six, seven, eight. Then I'm going to tendu my, my left foot, your right foot, front, side, back, and the plie, that's all the parallel legs there. And then the same thing on the other foot. Two, three, four, five, six, plie, and this time turn out. Then we'll repeat everything in first position. Half point, full point, half point, lower, half point, full point, half point, lower, plie, roll up, two times. One tendu in each direction, and the plie, one tendu in each direction, and the plie, we'll finish with the feet parallel. We'll only do this once since it does both sides. All right, so when we do this exercise, it's really a lot about ankle alignment. So as I'm going through dummy point, full point, and all of that, I have to make sure that I'm not pushing toward my pinky toe or toward my big toe, but rather right over the center of my foot, which on my feet is um, about where my second toe is. That's the center for me. So. Um, as I'm doing this, I can look in the mirror and I can try to find this line of my ankle being braced on both the inside and the outside. So this way you can see the angle of my ankle there curving inward. And this way the same thing, the ankle curves outward. Whereas when my line is centered, I can see this nice straight shape. Now on me, because my legs are fairly straight this way, both my knees and my feet, uh, ankles can touch when I'm in sixth position. So I have a tactile reference of just keeping my knees and ankles touching when I'm doing all of this. But if you are not need where your knees touch, but you can have a little space between your feet in parallel, that tactile reference when you're on any point isn't there. So I recommend putting a little squishy ball in between your feet or something like that to um, give yourself something to find your ankle alignment. And I showed this in the foot exercises video. It was one of the first standing exercises we did. If you're bow-legged where your feet touch and your knees don't touch, which I can kind of like force my knees into that position, um, you can still try to keep your ankles together. It's gonna be a little bit harder, but what you really wanna do is use some rotation and your inner thigh muscles to bring your knees together. You can kind of rotate them into a more straight position. And you'll find if you are also hyperextended where your knees lock backwards, that using that inner thigh and rotation to squeeze your knees together is also going to pull your legs into a more straight line rather than allowing them to hyperextend. Now I can't show this very clearly because I'm not that hyperextended. I only have a little bit. But if I walk backward, then you can see there's sort of this curve that way with my legs. But if I am thinking of having a straighter line, that sort of backward curve is not so visible.
exercise. Starting in first position, arms six, seven, eight. We're gonna demi plie three times with a slow first quarter bra. So the arm will stay in first, rise to fifth, tendu to second. Same thing in second. Same thing in fifth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go back to first. We're going to do a third quarter bra, which is forward and back. Now we'll do grand pliés. I'm going to grand plié one, two, three, four, a demi plié, and tendu to second. Grand plié again. One, two, three, four, demi plié, bringing the arm down, tendu to fifth. Grand plié again. Demi plié, tendu to first, and this time we'll come right toward the bar and away from the bar. We'll rise. Find our balance in first position. Don't roll out like me. Go really tall. Try to find that ankle alignment we just worked on. Then we'll squeeze the heels together as we lower and finish. Stays vertical. Belly button towards 
I encourage you to do it the second time without the bar. I'm going to start in first position and I'm just going to allege my arms seven and eight because my first tendu, the arm will come into first position, two, and then the fifth, three, four. Over to second as you tendu for the third time, head goes over the shoulder and toss my cards head to the back, to the front, and close. Reverse that arm comes down, looking inward, head is tilting toward the bar on one, two, look over the shoulder, three, four, and then on to second, five, six, using the head there, seven, and eight. Now also Kong goes tendu, tongye, and three, head toward the bar, and five, six, seven, head away from the bar, plie, relevé, plie, relevé, plie, relevé, plie, and stretch. Don't relevé the last one and open your, uh, bring your arm down so that we can repeat everything. Again, arms will go um, symmetrical there. And then when we go reverse, both arms in first, and then this is your second arabesque line. As you're doing this, focus on the articulation of the foot against the floor, which is my favorite thing to harp on. You can do this without your ballet shoes if you wanna just feel like socks on the floor so you can really tell what your toes are doing. We don't want them to curl or clench under but rather we want them to stay elongated so that our point is happening at the uh, joint, uh, the metatarsal joint, rather than the toe joints themselves curling underneath. That's really important for our point work. Another thing to think about is our upper body and how these two parts of my body are working together. So I want the arm and the leg to move outward together move outward together and my head is part of my upper body so it has to be involved with everything I'm doing. So try to incorporate the head with the arm from the very beginning. All right, here we go. LJ preparation. it can be really revealing how we're standing on our feet and where our stability is coming from. If you're suddenly feeling very wobbly, chances are you are using that bar for your balance rather than using your supporting leg. So let's talk about how we need to stand on our leg for support. So one thing we all know is that it's bad to force our turnout. That's going to create instability and potential injuries in your knees, hips, and feet. So instead, I'm going to rotate from the top of my hips and use my rotators to hold that turnout. Now, if I'm holding my turnout correctly, I should be able to keep the arch of my foot off the floor instead of rolling inward on it like that. And you can see if I face this way, how evident it is when I'm pronating. 
See how the outside of my foot just lifts off the floor? I'm exaggerating, very few people are this bad, but we do have this tendency to kind of shove this ankle forward when we're trying to turn out without using these muscles. So if I can lift my arch, press my pinky toe onto the floor, that is activating the back of my legs so that it's my hip that is controlling the placement of my foot and not friction. So that's like thing number one. Thing number two is to keep your weight forward over the balls of your feet. Um, if you think of your feet like a tripod, like the thing my camera is on right now, a tripod has got three little bases of support. Your foot has three bases of support for you, your heel, the inside and the outside of each metatarsal joint. So if I put a third of my weight on each of those three points, that translates to one third of my weight on my heel and two thirds of my weight on my toes. That's going to allow me to rise, to jump, to do any kind of changes of weight or of direction easily without ugh, having to do a big shift. So we've talked about how our turnout comes from our hip, how we stand on our feet, how we place our weight. The next thing is our pelvis. If I allow my pelvis to drop forward this way, that's gonna release all those muscles I just worked on turning on. So I have to think of keeping these hip bones in the front, my iliac crust, lifted upward like they're attached to suspenders or like I'm pulling on a pair of tights that's a little too small for me. And using my abdominals, my core muscles, to hold that into place. Now, I used to think of my hips as being what held my pelvis. So I would kind of like clench right here to try to keep my pelvis in place. Well, if you do that, it's really hard to move. Instead, if I can lift with my abs, really scooping in and up, pulling the belly button to the spine, my pelvis is stable, but my legs are free to move. I still have all my range of motion. And then last, let's think about our torso. So my rib cage should stack really neatly on top of my hips. If it protrudes forward, that's going to, again, pull my pelvis into an L anterior tilt. And now my weight is not evenly aligned to my body. So I've got to take this rib cage and stack it right on top so that everything is in a nice straight line. And again, it's my core muscles that hold it in place. You can also think of how your ribs wrap around to the back and attach at your spine. The back half of your rib cage needs to lift as well, as if you've got a partner. Usually when you stand on two feet with a partner, they have their hands around you like this. And if they're a good partner, they'll use their thumbs to give you a little bit of a lift in your back. And that just really feels very stabilizing and a lot easier to hold yourself in balance. So partner yourself. Feel like you've got a pair of hands around your waist, gently lifting you up with your thumbs to give you a little more support. And then our arms, just like everything else we've been saying, if our arms go behind us, that makes my ribs go forward, that makes my hips go back. Instead, my elbow always needs to be in front of my shoulder. No matter what position I'm doing, that's nearly always going to be the case, unless we're doing some kind of stylized port de bras, like um, in Swan Lake, where you have flaps that actually get to go behind your shoulders.
greater. Everything's a little bit crooked to me. All right, we'll tell you from fifth. Starting in fifth position, one, six, seven, eight. Come through twice, slow, two, three, four, and then quick, 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 closing plie. We're going to pas de cheval with an additional quarter bar here, one, close, two, pas de cheval side, close, four, pas de cheval back, close, six, plie, and stretch. Reverse, twice, slow, three, four, five, six, Plie, quarter bar and pas de cheval, one, two, three, four, short cut with the arm, five, six, plie, seven, eight. Side is a little different. We start with two slow, three quick, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then repeat it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, bring the arm down, eight. Coup de pied devant, basic position, so wrapped around the ankle. We're going to balance here four times. Hold one, two, three, plie, four. From the back, bring it to that same position again. Five, six, seven, plie, eight. And one, two, three, plie, four. Five, six, seven, plie, eight. So with each one of those releves, I'm doing a half quarter bar to the first, plie with the arm opening to second each time so that there's an additional lift with the arm as the leg comes up. So regardless of whether my foot is front or back, I'm bringing the heel forward into this basic coup de pied devant position, which is the same position I'm doing in my pas de cheval when my foot is in fifth position front. along the floor. From here, we're going to do just like the pas de cheval, but off the floor and on demi point. When I do pas de cheval off the floor, I call it petite double pay. So we have plie eight, petite double pay one, hold two, hold three, plie four. A la seconde, six, seven, eight. Derriere, two, three, four, five, six, seven, close, eight. 
Now we'll do degages to the side, closing in first. One, two, three, four, five, six, close back, seven and plie, hold eight, reverse. Two, three, four, five, six, close in fifth position on seven, finish eight. So this has three parts. Part one, three, 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 close. Three, 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 close. Part two is petite double pay. A little bit more neatly than that. I still have to make this position before I extend to the back and to the side. Part three is degages to the side, closing first. There's seven and seven. Okay, so what are we thinking about? I'm thinking about using my inner thighs to close my legs because it's a little bit quick. I'm also thinking about the alignment of my derriere leg, whether it's the inside or the outside leg, that I'm crossing it behind my hip. I'm also thinking about the position of my leg on succumb that is lined up with my working leg so that if I put it down, I'm in second position and not a really bad fourth. As I rise, I want to find a clean pathway to each position, just like the opposite of what I showed earlier. So it should look just like my pas de chevals, except for more accent out rather than an arc kind of rainbow shape. And then last of all, every single time I close in fifth position, I need both my heels to be on the floor especially if I'm about to releve. It's a really easy bad habit to get into of lifting up one heel. It's usually the back heel or whichever foot you're about to lift. So just be aware of that feeling of pop, but instead I have to press my whole foot into the floor and then my whole foot presses up so that both heels leave the floor at the same time. And ideally both heels land on the floor at the same time when I plie as well. short exercise. I'm going to start in fifth position and prepare arm only. Seven, eight, plie suit new. One arm is going to come up and over two, three, up and over four. And my head is following the line of my arms. From here, I am rond de jambe en dehors four times. Seven, eight, then I'll do 45 degrees, one, two, three, and a low arabesque, so lower than shoulder height here, four. Plie through first, releve to 90, five, six, seven, lower toe to floor, on plie, eight. Then everything reverses. From here, 
my arm is still going to go up to get to the devant position here with my arm also up. And then change the head to do my four rond de jambe on devant, seven, eight. I'm going to do a first position open. And I'll go ahead and do a fifth position here, but my head is going to be under today. Plie releve, 90 degrees, arabesque, five, six, seven, tendu, eight. Then the music will stop, but since we're here in tendu derriere, let's go ahead and pour your broth forward in a deep lunge. And then we'll rond de jambe and pour your broth forward and back in tendu. Stretching through the toes. 
going to combine Fondue, Ron Jean-Omer, and Relevés on one foot. So this is calf buster exercise for point strength. Starting in fifth position, seven and eight. My first fondue will be to flat. Then I'm gonna fondue keeping the leg where it is and rise, taking it with me. Then fondue releve, twice, seven, eight. I'm going to start that on the side, two, three, four, but then I'm gonna run the jambe layer on the arm, six, seven, eight. Reverse that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, Rond de jambe on the dawn, this time, seven, eight. Coupe over yourself and plie, relevé. Three and four, five and six, seven, eight. With four de bras, three and four, five and six, seven. Coupe dégage, eight. Coupe underneath yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With four de bras, three, four, five, six. Coupe dégage. We'll just finish in fifth position. So it kind of distributes the workload over both feet. So here's things we're thinking of. Lots of stuff that we've already been working on all class long, such as as you plie, your heel is completely on the floor, not sneaking up this way so that I have my whole foot strength to push onto W point. Thing two, we're going to keep our alignment in our pelvis as we plie and rise. Being able to do fondues on your balance is, in my opinion, a prerequisite for being able to do consecutive turns and fuetes in the center because your supporting leg is having to go down and up, down and up, down and up, while your upper body stays still and your working leg is moving in and out. So this is a preparation for turns. If you think of fondues that way, they're a lot more motivating, let's say. Let's also think about the position of our feet. Now, in my um, pas de balls and petite double pays, I was using this wrapped position of my foot, or the basic coup de pied position to the front, and then derriere to my left position. However, when I fondue, I can't do that position with a bent supporting leg, so I have to go to the conditional position, or toe in front of ankle bone. This position is really easy to mess up because we tend to overcross. So if you imagine doing this in your point shoes, you're going to put your toe where the ribbons of your shoes are, which, if you're not wearing point shoes, is right behind the medial malleolus. So we talked about this bone right here. It's this little kind of divot right behind that bone. That's where your foot goes, or right above it, so right in this little area. Um, and that's the position I'm using for my consecutive plie releves on my inside foot. Another thing I want you to think about is your rib cage alignment. Especially as we do fondues to the back, it's really, really easy to lean over. And in fact, I'm pretty sure I did that at least once demonstrating this exercise. So I've got to think of my supporting side being really tall, lifting up so that it's almost like I've got little chopsticks propping up my ribs on either side, trying to keep equal length of both sides. Why am I thinking of chopsticks right now? I don't know. Maybe I just really want to eat some Thai food. One more note about fondue, and that's our port de bras. To use a port de bras in your fondues, it should be a demi port de bras. And a lot of times what tends to happen is we sort of skip first position and do this sort of pseudo jumping jack angel lean on. So, the timing of the arm is a little bit odd because I want to be in first position at the bottom of my plie, which means this part has to be faster and this part has to be slower. So I have and one, two, and three, four. So you can see two different um, speeds in my port de bras depending on which part of it I'm doing. It's like the same idea as when we do H pays in our jumps, and you have to go first second in your first jump, and then slower arms bringing them down as you jump together. So it's that same kind of coordination.
third out. Two counts to bring your arm to fifth. Two relatives, rather. One more. This one does a coupe. Take a shake. Under. Next, we're going to do Frappe and Petit Formant. We're going to do this twice through. The first time I'm showing it on flat and the second time on demi point. So feel free to do it exactly the same as me, or if you really want to challenge your calf strength, do the whole thing on demi point. This is an exercise for stamina, so that's another thing that's crucial for point work is being able to maintain a high demi point with turnout, with an aligned pelvis and torso for an extended amount of time. Now, the other thing I'm going to say about this is I'm going to show both my frappes and my petit bottoms two different ways. Now, there are lots of different ways to do frappes that are correct, as I've said before. And um, at our studio, we do use three of them, basically. We either do a flexed or a pointed foot brushing on flat, and we do a pointed foot non-brushing on point. So this is RAD, this is French, and this is Russian methods of frappes. What I'm going to show on flat today is a flex to a point in my frappes, and because of that, I'm also going to do my petit bottom flexed. However, if you're going to do the whole thing on demi point, you can go ahead and do the whole thing pointed. So I start in fifth position, and I have arms six and seven and eight. So it's different from my normal preparation where my arm goes six, seven, eight, or seven, eight or wherever, instead I'm going to go seven arm to second position, eight the arm comes down, and at the same time my foot will flex in a coup de pied de bon. And I'm going to do petit bottom with an accent. And one, hold, two, and three, hold, four, five, hold, six, seven, hold, eight. Then without an accent, one, two, three, four you have to hold, and we'll frappe front, side, back, and place. Then reverse that. And one hold two, and three hold four, and five hold six, and seven hold eight, and one, and two, and three, and four, five, six, seven, pull in. And the second time, also releve if you're not there already. Then the rest of the exercise, my foot remains pointed, but it's the exact same thing. One hold two, three hold four, five hold six, seven hold eight, one, two, three, four, oops, hold four, five, six, seven, pull in on the eight reverse everything. We won't do a balance at the end because we've been on demi point this whole entire time. Feel free to test your balance throughout this exercise just to see how you're standing on your foot if everything is aligned. If you feel a lot of weight on this arm, chances are your rib cage has slid over. Instead, we've got to pick that up and keep everything stacked just like Lego blocks. Stack them all on top of each other for maximum stability. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
six, seven, and lower it back down on eight to do deplete arm and leg come up one, two, extend three, pull, four, flex, five, point, six, climb, do, and close. Same thing to the side. One, two, hold, three, four, flex, five, point, six, climb, do, and close. Same thing to the back. One and two, three and four, flex, five, point, six, flex again, seven, point, eight. We're gonna grind on each arm. One, two, three, four. Bring the arm through first to arabesque as we pass a cartier to arabesque, five, six, with a fondue, seven, close, back. Then everything reverses. Double pay back, flex and point on five, six, close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ooh. Five, six, seven, eight. Grand on the one, two, three, four. Rush through the front, fondue, and close. Now we've talked about grand on the jambe a lot. We've done partner exercises. We're really focusing on trying to hold on to this turnout as we go from side to back. So don't let yourself lift your hip as you bring the leg from front to side. So if I'm here, I can't go like that. Really focus on maintaining the turnout of your working leg, even if your leg has to be a little bit lower. If you do this every day with correct placement, over time, your leg will go up. But if you do it high with incorrect placement, you're not building strength in the correct muscles, so you'll never be able to do it correctly at that height. So use the correct muscles low, and then you'll be able to get your leg up higher.
Atma's next. I've done the beginning half of this a few times before, so it might be familiar to you. You are three Grand Atma front, two, three, four, five, plie six, and a passe relevé. Side, two, three, four, five, plie six, passe relevé. Same thing to the back, two, three, four, five, plie six, passe relevé. Now instead of going side again, we're going to grand batma en cloche or balançoire. Front, back, front, pique up, and five, six, seven, pique up, and that's a quick transition. Reverse everything. Three grand batma back, finishing in plie, passe relevé. Three side, passe relevé. Three front, passe relevé. Batma en cloche, one, two, three, pique four, five, six, seven, pique eight, close finish the end. Okay, so number one thing, make sure you're maintaining the stability of your supporting leg. Don't let your knee buckle, don't let it twist, try not to roll in on your supporting foot. Instead, really stable, holding onto your turnout like you're spiraling, spiraling, spiraling from hip down to your toes, lifting the arch, anchoring yourself with your rotators. That's like number one thing. Number two, Brush your foot down into the floor. Get some friction here because that's going to give you the momentum you need to bottom on your leg really high with less effort. And then number three, which kind of goes along with number two, make sure your working leg is also staying straight. I don't care if your leg is going really high if it's going bent. It has to stay stretched no matter how high or low it is. Even if it's here, this is better than that. Right? Yeah, I think we'd all agree. And then think about your torso staying lined up over your supporting side as well. So as I go to the back, I don't want to lean over to do my grandma on my back. Instead, my chest has to stay centered so the sternum of my body is reaching forward in space like the prow of a ship. You know, like how old-fashioned ships would have like some kind of decorative thing in the very front um, or the prow. Maybe it would be like a dragon or a mermaid or some kind of mythical thing, and it would be like leading the ship. So that's you, you're right at the front of your ship and the sternum has to be leading you forward and not that way. Pull the toes back and hip each time. Arm all the way down.
and see how long it takes you to put your point shoes on. That way you can practice getting speed. Okay, so I have not taped my toes beforehand, so it's going to take me a little bit longer. I'm going to guess about two minutes. Um, ideally, you want to be able to put your point shoes on in under a minute. 30 seconds would be awesome. If you pre-tape your toes, that will speed up the process quite a bit. But since I did not do that, it's going to take me a little bit longer than usual. Right now, the only place I need to tape is my big toe, just because my toenail on that side likes to smush into my second toe, and it's really annoying. Oops. are actually too small for me. I'll do that again. I tie my shoes one ribbon at a time. That helps keep the shank centered on my feet so it doesn't twist outward. Okay, so I just was just under a minute and a half here. How are you doing? So if you get your point shoes on early, you have time to stretch. Yoga days. Write in your journal. Again, just going to let the timer go to two and a half minutes. And at that point, if you're not done, you can stop. Exercises on point. Remember that if your level C who is not yet on point shoes, you are totally able to do all of these exercises, some of them without the bar, the, uh, the level C's and point shoes will be doing with the bar. So just challenge yourself and remember that everything is about building more strength for you for preparing for point work. So we're going to do the same um, warm-up exercise we did at the very beginning of class. Do you remember that? So we have half point, full point, half point down. Like the other foot, we gave it up twice. Then we did Tanya on Claw in parallel. Not quite on Claw, was it? It was front side back, plie, front side back, plie, turn out. And then we did everything all over again. All right? So this music will be repetitive. I'm sorry.
one hand on the bar, you can put no hands on the bar, however you feel um, strong doing this. So I have plie on eight, so I can releve on one, plie two, three, plie four, five, plie eight, one, and two, three, four, five, six, and tonic and four, and one, two, So remember what we've said all throughout this class, which is both heels have to be in plie, heels on the floor, at the same time. Both heels have to lift off the floor at the same time and arrive on the floor at the same time. And that's also true of fifth position. So for releves consecutive like this, I don't want to go step roll down or step step, one, two. I want to spring up on two feet and spring down on two feet. Both feet are trying to move together. Plie on eight. gentle with my landings as if there's like eggshells on the ground or like there's 
a field of marshmallows that I don't want to squash. So I'm going to just softly place my heels down each time so that I can't hear them land. This part of my shoe is hard. It's going to make noise. But this part of my foot does not have to because it's just satin. There isn't even any leather back there. So the amount of noise your heels make is completely dependent upon how you put your weight on the floor. So try to keep it really light and soft. Let's go ahead and do the plie on point that I showed in my last point class video. So we're going to start in the first position, plie on seven, releve and pull the heels together on eight. So they're kind of locked into place here. Now if you're in demi point shoes, um, you're not on point yet, you can do this exercise, but you're going to do it in a different way. Instead of holding your ankles still like this and pleading over, you're actually going to press over your dummy point to try to increase the height of your dummy point. But for point shoes, we're here in this. This is not a real position, although this is the position of your feet in chenise. And we're going to plie and stretch three and four, four times, six, seven, eight, and balance two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and repeat. Another thing you can do if you're in technique shoes is you can do this exercise in parallel and again have an, a ball between your ankles so that you can feel your ankle alignment and just do the, um, the same exercises on point that way, pressing over your, your um, arch on the plies and then balancing for eight counts. So we'll just do one more. We'll do beret. I'm going to do it along the bar. You can try these in center on your own one spot or traveling. Um, I'm going to do side, side, and I'm also going to do pas-de-rue forward and backward. Uh, but feel free to do these however the space you're in suits you. So if you're in a space where it's not really safe to travel, just stay in place and just do berets in fifth. And you can also do the little array exercise where you go faster and faster and faster or you can just straight up beret. Remember that when we beret traveling we want our back foot to initiate the movement and when I'm on point most of the actual bend in my uh, legs happens at the ankle less so in the knees. My knees are relaxed but they're not bent per se. They're going to stay uh, they're going to maintain the appearance of being together, let's say. So I'm not going to see space between my knees. Instead, I'm going to see this little paddling with my feet as my ankles kind of go back and forth like that. A little bit like in this exercise, just not as um, exaggerated.
Thanks, dancers. I hope that was a good class for you. I hope you're able to do everything in the space you're in. Uh, I tried to do just bar and kind of staying in one spot exercises today, just in case um, you don't have a floor that you can really like turn on or jump on or whatever. So um, give me some feedback. Send me a video of you dancing. Send me a video of you practicing a brace from your dance even. Um, make sure you let me know if you saw the video that um, I sent of the Chartist choreography from Leslie. So, all right, I will see you when I see you. Stay healthy. Bye. Okay, so if you watch me demonstrate the double pay exercise, you'll notice the exact moment I realized that for the last week almost, I've been demonstrating every exercise on my left, whereas usually I alternate between left and right. And I woke up this morning and my left side was so incredibly sore, especially in my hip flexors, but not my right side. And I was trying to figure out why that happened. And now I know. Always demonstrate both sides, dance teachers, and anyone who is teaching anything physical. Don't overdo one side or you will regret it.